what is up guys welcome back to another video hit the like button subscribe turn on post notifications join the twitter and the discord server so you don't miss our community discussions and let's get into this and so guys i need to do a video on this this is freaking ridiculous bro this is actually like it, it like it's gotten so bad to the point where i have to do a video on this i i have to there, there's no there's no other way I can think about this. This guy has decided that it's it's just incredible. The cope, the copium is incredible. It's crazy, guys. They, it's to the point where I have to do a video on this because at this point it's just dishonesty. It's not even like opinion. It's just this. It's just no, no. It's just not true, bro. Like the first video. GOP primary reveals Trump's weaknesses in the 2024 election. Literally not true, bro. Like, it's not true. He's either going to slightly underperform his 2020 turnout or probably match it or do a little better. And the only reason why he's going to get less raw votes in the primary and percentages is because he had an actual contender unlike Bill Weld. And he's not the incumbent. But the fact that he's not an incumbent getting 70 80 90 percent in some states is crazy and not only that guys this guy is claiming okay he's claiming that zombie voters for nikki haley exposed trump's weaknesses and he's basically talking about how because of the fact that he's not getting 80 90 percent and that there's this significant amount of the gop crossover democrats that are voting for nikki haley that those voters are going to defect from Donald Trump in the general, which it, it's it's only three million votes in the entire primary. It's it's three votes. It's three million votes she roughly got. So something like that. And it's it's kind of going up. But bro, it's just not true, bro. Like if you look, look at Florida, 2024, he got 900,000 votes. If you go to the 2016 primary, he got right about a million he's performing right in line what he got and the only reason why he's not hitting a million is because there is an actual other contender in the primary he's right about hitting his 2016 margin he got 45 percent of the vote here he got 81 percent of the vote in florida he got about 1.1 million votes in the primary here he's sitting at around 900,000. he's performing right in line with his 2016 2020 presidential election performances it's not like he's underperforming by a lot and the only reason why he's not hitting a million here is because nikki haley is effectively the other candidate in the race and she's actually a bigger problem compared to other candidates for example in washington if you go to wash let's go to washington just hypothetically let's look at washington for example right dude's acting like he's underperforming by 40 points you see look at this this dude managed to get a hundred thousand more votes in the washington primary with a major competitor than he even did in 2016. now his turnout was obviously higher in 2020 compared to here but he won the 2016 election with only getting this many votes in this primary if we go to let's i don't know let's look at another video he does arizona he's getting around let, let's look at his arizona one he's getting around let, let's see what he got in arizona because I, I see it here 87 percent of the vote is in he's at you know 555,000. so let's go to let's go to arizona if we go to arizona he got 200,000 votes here he got 200,000 votes in 2020, it doesn't seem like they really had one because I can't click it, but he only got half of what he has here. He has double the support despite having a major contender in the race running against him. If you go to Michigan, he was able to get like, I mean, I wonder if it's going to come up here. Okay, look, he got 400,000 votes here. If we look at Michigan, let's see if he pulls up, if he pulls up Michigan. Like, see, look at this. Like, really, like, Mark Cuban, like, Biden fundraising. He's using money as a factor. Like, really, bro? Like, 
Biden is not going to spend his way to being popular. He's just not going to do it. He's not doing it. He's not going to do it. It's not happening, guys. Like, this primary is actually one of the reasons why Trump is on track to have such an easy victory in 2024 as of right now. He is unifying most of the GOP as the non-incumbent. Incumbents don't get numbers like that. They don't get 70, 80, 90% in some states. That does not happen for incumbents, for non-incumbents. So the fact that he's the non-incumbent and is getting that much is very, very good. There are certain states that Biden is getting less votes, or not getting less, but he's getting, well, in a lot of states, he's getting less votes than Trump raw margin-wise. But there's even some states where, like in Minnesota, he's barely destroying trump's margin or percentage in that state he's he's getting 71 and trump got 69 percent like that is not good at all that is a very bad sign for him and then the next one this was my favorite joe biden can win the election but lose the popular vote like really really like what is this bro this is the the most shit take i've ever seen in my life bro like that's that's not possible there's no way i'll literally do a map for you guys so you can see what would have to happen for trump to win the popular vote but lose the electoral college basically he'd have to get dictator margins in all the red states he'd have to get dictator margins in all the states he'd have to win iowa and ohio by 15. he'd have to win basically win texas and florida by almost 15 points he'd have to get north carolina at like a five point win He'd have to win Georgia by a lean margin, win Arizona by a lean margin. He'd have to basically get Colorado within five and like get a bunch of states. But then like Oregon and Washington go likely. Illinois would have to be close. New York would have to be close. These would have to go all here. Like, so he's getting reduced margins in all these blue states, but then somehow magically he wins Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. That's literally what he would have to do to, at that point, that's basically how he would win the Electoral College but lose the popular vote, which I think is almost impossible because a lot of the big popular vote shares in some of the cities come from some of those Democratic areas. Look, this is literally what would have to happen for Trump to lose the Electoral College but win the popular vote. Biden would have to win Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania by tilt margins, only winning New Mexico by, like, three, winning Minnesota by two, winning Virginia by three, winning New Hampshire by two or three, and only winning New York by, like, 12 or 13, 11, Illinois by only nine or ten like some of these states while trump gets dictator margins in the rules but somehow loses wisconsin michigan and pennsylvania like that would make no sense like that's not gonna happen it's just not happening he's just coping about the fact that the guy who paid him to work for his campaign is about to lose as of right now i'm not saying that biden can lose i mean they can't win or whatever the case is the only way i see biden being doa is if they seize Trump's properties on Monday. If they do that, then yeah, Biden's DOA. But, like, really? Like, like this is the most crap take I've ever seen. He said, oh, uh, because of the midterms, you know, Republicans voted, but, you know, they've suffered major losses. And no, 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 no. But, they, but the problem is, is that Republicans still won. They still won the House. They still won it. And yes, it was close, but the thing is, is if you actually Any add up all of the claim. votes, if you add up all the raw so votes that. Democrats now in these key states, states, right? If you add up all of the votes the from the vote. national popular vote here, and you actually allocate it by electoral college votes, Donald Trump would have won 297 electoral college votes. The so Republicans would have won 297 electoral college votes. So they still would have won the Electoral College in this scenario. And not only that, the Senate map was actually a tied national environment. So it was, it was basically a tied national environment with New York being closer, Illinois being a little bit closer, California being closer, but Wisconsin going red, Georgia not really going blue by that much. 
uh, compared to the polls now with Trump and then Nevada barely went to 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 the incumbent Cortez Masto. Fetterman got lucky because he is technically more conservative than John uh than Oz in some ways and he's actually been a pretty he's been pretty based lately. So in hindsight I can't understand why he was able to actually win the race looking back on it now, but it it's it, it's honestly pretty insane that this guy can sit here and really tell his audience and be like, "Okay, yeah, look, he's going to win the electoral college biden can win the electoral college but not win the popular vote like that's not that's not gonna happen that's not happening bro see look he has the same map but he's not he's not doing the margins because if you do the margins it looks super dumb it looks very dumb when you don't do the margins this looks super dumb he'd have to win all of these by like 10 points or more than what he won about in 2020 win texas by 11 win florida by almost 15 win north carolina by seven win georgia by three or four win arizona by three or four win nevada but then like the rust belt all goes blue like that's not gonna happen that's just not gonna happen and then this this guy is really sitting here and telling everybody, oh my God, it was a major win. No, it was not. It was not. If you actually look at a national survey with all people, not just people who watched the speech on CNN, which usually the incumbent president, if they have supporters, those tend to, that tends to be most of the audience for it. That's most of the audience for the show. That's the thing that people are not understanding. Most of the audience for the State of the Union are supporters of the incumbent. So naturally, they're going to get good approval ratings. But even here, he's doing bad because Obama was getting 80, 90 percent. Trump was getting in the 70s to low 80s. Biden is sitting at 6 and 10. And his supposedly final, hopefully, State of the Union speech. And it's pretty incredible that... This guy is really trying to spin it. Oh my God, like he he did so great. No, if you look at an actual national survey poll and they actually pulled this, like, what did you think about Biden's State of the Union? Do you think it helped him or whatever? Or do you think like it was a good speech? 59% say disagree and 41% agree. So literally 60% of the country believed from that survey that the State of the Union was not a good speech. And a lot of them probably didn't even watch it anyway. Overall, and not only that, Biden had way less cable viewers than Trump to even begin with anyways. So it's just a mess. It's this guy's copium is absolutely ridiculous. And it's been like week after day after day, just a new video, a new video. And I'm like, damn, bro, like when will we ever stop with this? But he's has not stopped. So I, I had to do a video. I had no choice. I had to cover this and just tell him, tell it straight. Like, bro, like you're, you're, like even this one i'm not even covering this one because it's honestly pissing me off so much but like senate democrats on track to for clean sweep really like come on bro like west virginia's an automatic flip montana is basically a flip even in the worst case scenario tim sheehy is still gonna win montana by five you're going to sit here and tell me that Trump's going to win at Montana by like 20, even more than that, probably now. So you're telling me Trump's going to win Montana by 20 to 25 points, but Tester's going to barely eke out the win? First of all, in the past two cycles, one election has there been where the state level voted for a president and then voted for the opposing candidate in the other race. It's happened one time and it was in Maine and it's Maine we're talking about. Other than that, whoever tends to win the state tends to carry a lot of people over with them. And so that is my thing. That's why this is such an issue because it's like, it's just dishonesty. They're not on track for a clean sweep. Now I'm not saying Republicans can mess it up, but even in the worst case scenario, Republicans come out with 50, 51 seats. So for you to sit there and say that it's a clean sweep is not true at all. It's just not true. It's not at all.
Now, House GOP majority declining? Yeah, sure. It's not a GOP flop era. Actually, a lot of rhinos are leaving, which is good for us. He's not wrong about that. That's bad for the GOP. Biden wins undecided voters. I mean, he's nitpicking a poll there. Ohio Republicans nominate losing candidate for 2024. Oh, geez. So the state Trump's going to win by 10 points. Somehow, Sherrod Brown's going to pull out the victory in a Republican state that Trump is leading in the polls by 10 points, in which he won it by eight. It was only and was losing the polls by two points back then. And he won it by eight points. And now he's leading the polls by 10. And you're telling me that Bernie Moreno, who won every single county in the primary and won the primary by basically 20 points, outperforming the Emerson poll, which had him winning it by nine. You're going to tell me that guy's going to lose? And not only that, Bernie Moreno's strongest performance and overperformance was actually in Northeastern Ohio, which is where Sherrod Brown usually does good. You're going to tell me that that's a losing candidate. You're going to tell me that this is the one election where Sherrod Brown actually runs in a presidential ticket since like Obama. And you're going to tell me this is the race that he's supposedly going to win. And where in all the polls that he's leading in, he's he's not even getting 50 percent. He's sitting in the low 40s. And not only that, a lot of polling doesn't take into account low propensity voters that vote on party lines because they're voting for Donald Trump. Those are not take into account because those people are not answering polls. So that's already bad. Biden's win. Yeah, I already did that. This you could say theoretically is kind of true. Like, I mean, if there is a slight polling error, you could say Biden does actually win the election. Um, but that depends. He's banking on the fact that the polls are going to underestimate Trump or underestimate Biden, which I don't know. I don't know. And then, like, Joe Biden's pathway is easier than you think, which theoretically it is because he could just win Michigan, Pennsylvania, Arizona. But he doesn't even do that. He did, like, the Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania route thing, which theoretically he's kind of right about that, but no. And then, oh, Biden reclaims the lead over Trump. Yeah, in one poll where he's leading by two, and that poll he led by, like, what, 10 points in 2020? Like, come on. Those are more debatable. But, like, the videos I picked out... It's completely unacceptable that this guy really thinks that those are good takes. It's just not good at all. Not not good in the slightest. And so this is all I had to say. I just really did not appreciate the way that this is going. From my understanding, this guy is basically working for Biden. So that's why he has to post these videos. It's because of the fact he works for the campaign. And he's just coping about the fact that Trump is on track to win the election. And so, guys, if you guys really did enjoy this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, make sure to follow the Twitter and join our Discord server in the description down below and hit the post bell notification so you don't miss another video that I post. And I hope to see you guys very, very soon.